So we're here. So th this is has been a long journey for you and for a lot of people. What, what does this feel like? What does this mean to you? This feels like a culmination of years of resistance and the people that are gathering to stop the bulldozers now are people that have been working on this issue for many, many years, decades. So 
yeah, this is really wonderful to see everybody throughout the world coming wow. to support the Sacred Mountain. And, and a lot of the, the figures that you guys compiled over like decades almost. I mean, yes. Yeah. And, and you, you found all these these numbers and uses for this thing, and 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 you, you approach it a certain way, and all these other people are approaching it in different ways too. There's many ways to look at this, from ecological, from the aquifer, from cultural rights to the religious rights. So there are many ways to look at this, and plus just the legal. The absolute blatant illegal construction of, of the original plan for six telescopes to now 24 telescopes, no more. We're not opposed to science, we're opposed to the desecration of the mountain, period. Take your science somewhere else, go to outer space, launch yourself, whatever you need to do, you're not going to do it on the mountain. It's not going to happen. TMT's over. It's not going to happen. Yeah, and, and this is it's quite beautiful with all the, the people here. It's wonderful it's to see sacred. it. It's so, it's so wonderful. On every island, people are offering resistance. Every island. It's amazing. But it's not surprising. Everybody, everybody, everybody respects that mountain. Everybody, it's sacred to everybody. Not just the people in Hilo. It's a very, it's, people know the depths of the beginning of this the history with this mountain and the cultural importance of this mountain is just people know what that is so so you, you've seen it from the, when, when they started this whole whole thing too so i mean as well as other people but, yeah and, and all these people a lot of them too so, yeah sacred. many many people i mean the hui on the big island are just in the forefront of this the they are the ones you know the, all the hui Royal Order, Kealoha, all those guys, they have been at the very front of this from the beginning. Mahalo, mahalo new. Thank you. No treaty, no title, no TMT. No treaty, no title, no TMT. The letter explains more fully what it says, but the state of Hawaii is not lawfully existing here. It cannot lawfully engage in any contract with the TMT. TMT, TMT holds an unlawful contract. In fact, I don't even know if they have a signed contract. So because they don't have any lawful entity to deal with, their construction on the property lacking a um, lawful contract is the destruction of property in violation of international law. It is my, vi it is my obligation on behalf of Kahokai and Lanakila to report those violations of international law should they commence. Thank you very much. We are also told that this, that we need this telescope to take Hawaii to be a world-class astronomy institute, a world-class astronomy place. Really? I'm old enough to remember that. That was the excuse of the other telescope. And that was the excuse of the other telescope. That is the excuse that they tell us every single time they want to build a new telescope. Okay, so it really makes me wonder, what's the quality of the institute? Maybe it's not the telescope, maybe it's the astronomers, maybe it's the people working there, that they still, after 13 telescopes, have not gotten Hawaii on the map, okay, of a great uh, institute of astronomy, world-class institute. What's going on? What's going on, scientists? So in conclusion, Kalamai, with all my aloha, okay? I just would like to say the process has been followed sometimes legally. My husband would argue completely illegally. The idea of talking to us, Kanaka Maole, and others, the newspapers and articles have painted this as a racist issue. Oh, the Hawaiians versus everyone else. There are many non-Hawaiians who are nationals who are supporting no TMT. So let's not make this a race issue. But the idea of going, mahalo, the idea of going through this process, giving all of us kanaka this illusion of inclusion has got to stop. You want us to tell you how we feel, we do, and then you ignore us 
and go forward with your plan. Okay, awe na hoi, aole TMT, mahalo nui. I have prepared points, but I did want to say in response to some of the other testimony that while they laud the accomplishments of the science of astronomy, I want to say that as a professor at the university for 20 years, what I am most proud of are the students and faculty who develop Kanaka Weavy science, who have re recovered uh, this kind of, who, who work to restore Aina Momona, who work to restore the Lo'ikalo, the Loko'i'a, and the Hawaii. That is the kind of science that is sustainable, not a telescopic science that looks at things far away, but things that affect us and the sustainability of our future in Hawaii. Now, I went to the hearings, the contested case hearings on Hawaii Island, and I witnessed the kinds of arguments that the University of Hawaii made on behalf of the TMT. And they were not in any way respectful of Hawaiian rights or Hawaiian traditions. So let me just tell you, one of the things, one of the closing arguments that the University of Hawaii attorneys made is that there is no cultural impact, the TMT will have no cultural impact because all Hawaiian practitioners have to do is cover the TMT with their hand while they continue their practice. What kind of argument is that made by University of Hawaii attorneys? What they're saying is cultural practitioners have to pretend that they cannot see the telescope. And that is heva. So I want to ask you the $1.4 billion question, which is how can an 18-story structure with a footprint of eight acres digging 20 feet into the sacred earth, how can that have no negative or I'm sorry, no negative or adverse impact. How is that possible? Okay, so I have read through 2,000 pages of the final environmental impact statement, and this is what they argue at the end of 2,000 pages. They argue that the, the TMT taken together with the other 13 telescopes will have or does have already an adverse impact, but they say, there is a threshold of impact that has already been crossed. And so any further impact after that is negligible. It doesn't matter anymore. Now, this poses a threat to every vahikapu in Hawaii. If you say that the threshold impact has been crossed and that nothing matters after that, that threatens the whole environmental review process, but it also threatens the vahikapu. So you have the power to change this. I am not Hawaiian, but I do follow the discussions of OEV nation building. And what I want to ask is, well, Noel Peralto talks about Mauna Kea as the opu, the whale, the whale tooth pendant. And I want to ask, what will the Lahui be built upon if you lose this opu, if you lose Mauna Kea? What is the land upon which you will build this Lahui? Realize Lahui, the fool is the same, only time passed, they still rule the game. But see the difference between Kibo and Lepo is just the Manava right smack dab in the middle. <laughs> the Kibo is the shit that come out of your, your mouth, come out your ass. But the lepo is the mana that grow the kalo and the grass. If recycling renewable energy, going green in America is a big lie. Look at another planet to save mankind. That's Hawaiian. But please use every other option, other option before you try. But why you ask should you listen? I'm just a humble taro farm, Kanaka Maoli. If I, I hold no land, no water, no hale, more degree. I stand here as a humble taro farmer to declare for my pukuna, pukuna and say, all at once, simultaneously, we become masters and pray. 
from color farmer to horticulturist, biologist, zoologist, nutritionist, dietitian, entomologist, meteorologist, agronomist, astrologist, ecologist, meteorologist, volcanologist, gastronomist, herbalist, virologist, phenologist, dendrologist, pedologist, endophologist, oceanographer, geologist, botanist, plant pathologist, agriculturist, yeah, it's true. These are the professions that one man replaced as you. Who is the real pagan is what you call us, you see? But our ancients have written moral and theatrical history. We read clouds, winds, the stars, and season. Whenever nature happens, we are really more the reason. We are an ethereal people. On a different level, we be free. Passing down of Ike, moving forward, never stagnant were we. Our record of this evidence of truth is the kumulipo you see. The answer is for the person you seek. Is there my earth friend? Not in the TNT. So one thing we need to understand is this is not a, this is not a movement of anti-science. Come on. <laughs> We're Hawaiian. We got here because of science. Our kupuna were some of the greatest scientists in the world. Traveling the Pacific in a time in the, the largest ocean in the world where most of the world thought the world was flat. They were scared for sail five miles off ashore because we we're going to fall off the edge of the world. That's one of the greatest achievements of mankind. Perhaps the greatest achievement. Not going to say I'm a little bit biased, but, but think about it. On canoes, with stone and wood, no metals, none of that kind of technology. We had maka, we had pepeao, we had na'o. And we had, we had courage in the faith. We had, we had faith in the teachings of our ancestors. Yeah? Papa Mao said, if I have courage, it's because I have faith in the teachings of my ancestors. When did our ancestors teach us to desecrate Aina? Never did. They never did. And again, we're not against science. I mean, look at, look at, look at Hawaii before. Captain Cook came, 1778. Couldn't believe how productive the lands were, how clean the people were, how we could sustain and feed a people so easily. Over 800 fish ponds in Hawaii. Is that not science? Thousands and thousands of lo'i. Is that not science? Look at the kumulipo. Is that not science? That's science. What we're against is desecration. is a separation and further denationalization of our people by destructing a monument. By destructing lands that are sacred. By destructing, desecrating burial grounds, religious sites. It's a continuation of the denationalization of our people that's been institutionalized since 1898. Actually, 1896, when they banned Hawaiian language in public schools. And there's been a lot of efforts over the years. I'm going to give people credit for that. There's been a lot of efforts over the years to reestablish culture in education. Hawaiian immersion schools, Hawaiian charter schools, Hawaiian medium schools. And what did you think was going to happen? When our kiki and our children started to, started to learn the truth. Learn it from preschool to 12th grade and then forget about it. What do we think was going to happen? This is what's happening. Because we know the truth. We know the truth. And once you know the truth, you cannot forget the truth. If you knew the truth, would you believe anything other than the truth? So, I know I call my, I'm over my time. Um, but in regards to Kana Iolvalu, you know, there's a lot, a lot of efforts over the years to unify the Hawaiian people. Unify the Hawaiian people. Spent millions and millions of dollars on it. Guess what? We've done that for you. This is the greatest activation, mobilization, and unification of the Hawaiian people since 1897. And we spent zero dollars to do it. We spent zero dollars to do it. And we also need to understand that this is not just a Hawaiian thing, though. We're not going to underestimate that. But we cannot underestimate the unification that's, that's taking place here. But it's also a worldwide thing. It's an international thing. And so let's not deprive the people 
of something that we claim to have been striving for for so long. This is what everybody wanted. So we got it. We're doing it. Let the people do it. We don't need money. And so I'm not here to ask OHA for money. I'm here to ask for support. Well, I don't want money. I don't care. Because we've shown we can do it without it. And to the TMT, we don't want the money. We never have aale makoa, iminamina, ikapu kala, oke opuni, how come? Because we'll have a makoa, ikapu haku, ikai kamaha oka aina. We've been saying this since 1893. We'll say it for the rest of our life. Until the very end, until the last aloha aina. Aloha aina, oya io. Mahalo nui. Do you guys want to say anything about what this means to you guys? This is a very, very special moment right now. All of us Kanaks getting together, Hali Hali, getting all rocks to our Ahu to protect Mauna Kea. Pa'a o Mauna Kea. Aloha. Aloha Aina. Aloha Aina. So today, today is a really interesting day for all of you. Um, either we're going to bring everybody together or we're going to prolong this akaka between our leaders in the Hawaiian community and the people. And I'm a firm believer that you guys are really not the leaders, it's the people who are the leaders. Uh, the people are leading right now. That's the, that's, that's the message that needs to get across. It's the people are leading. We don't have to figure out spend $5 million to bring the people together to go after this one thing or that thing or anything else. All you have to do is support. Oh,